Singapore generated around 16.3 billion pounds of solid waste in 2022. Almost half of that is dumped here, Singapore's only landfill. And a portion of Semakau landfill is already 90% full. Based on our estimate, the island will be completely filled by 2035. Singapore, smaller than the size of New York City, is also one of the most dense countries in the world. So it's tackling its trash by turning all of this into this in order to prolong the life of the landfill. I mean, where can we form another landfill? <laughs> the current key to Singapore's trash problem is incineration. While 55% of all waste is recycled, according to the NEA, 42% goes to the waste to energy plants where it's burned, leaving only ash and 3% of solid waste to go to the landfill. For just one incineration site, trucks collect around 6 million pounds of municipal solid waste a day. After weighing, it gets dropped off here. Okay, this is our reception hall. We have 1 to 15 numbers get. According to Singapore's National Environment Agency, 42% of trash collected in 2021 went to waste to energy plants like this one. There are four active waste to energy plants in Singapore. What can be processed at the facility moves onto the waste bunker. At the crane control room, operators lift massive amounts of the mixed waste and feed it into these incinerators, which reach temperatures of about 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. All of the heat from the waste incineration creates steam in the boilers, which is then converted into electricity through these steam turbine generators. This can generate and export about 120 megawatts per hour, which can meet the demand of about 240,000 households. The Chuas One West Energy Plant is one of the highest electricity generation facility. The resulting flue gas is passed through a catalytic fabric filter to remove particles. According to the EPA, these incinerators tend to generate slightly more greenhouse gas emissions than natural gas for the amount of electricity produced, but less than coal or oil. Then the cleaned gas go through the ID fan. Our stack height is 120 meters. With online analyzer, it is continuously monitored. We maintain the emission limit within the limit. Another byproduct of the process? Ash. Lots of it. According to the NEA, the amount of ash left is roughly 10% of the original volume of the waste. After scrap metal is removed, the remainder is transported to the next point of the process. The ashes are loaded at Tuas Marine Transfer Station. All the way here takes about four hours. Semakau is located five miles south from Singapore. Our barge is a huge barge. It's a more than 85 meter long. It has a cargo of about 3,500 meters, which is equivalent to one and a half swing pool size. In one day, about 4 million pounds of ash and non-incinerable waste is transferred here, loaded into dump trucks, and brought to these cells for final disposal. This is considered phase two of the landfill, which is still a lagoon, but phase one, this is the phase one of the landfill cell. About 90% of this landfill cell has already completed been filled. As you can see here, mostly uh, contains the incineration bottom ash and also the non-incinerable waste that we receive from the mainland Singapore. To ensure the landfill does not contaminate the surrounding environment, there are several measures in place. Over time, the landfilling and rains will increase the water level inside the phase two. So if the water level increases, we need to pump some of the water out to the sea. Before the waters are pumped out to the sea, they are being treated by the wastewater treatment plant. Semakau's perimeter bund is also lined with an impermeable membrane that prevents leachate from getting into the outside sea. Leachate is like, remember, take it as a coffee powder when you have a filter, if you have a coffee powder, you put the water over it and over time this water will start to leak out. Instead of coffee powder you have here, it's actually the incineration water mesh and the water is what you call a leachate. Semakau Landfills Phase 1 was commissioned in 1999. Its Phase 2 area, commissioned in 2015, is currently about 10% filled. In the 60s, before they built waste to energy plants, the waste actually go to Lolong Halus and then they dump this, they go there, they just throw it there and just bury it. So currently, we don't have such things because all domestic waste goes to our what we call waste to energy plant, which we have visited. So what they receive from a big amount of waste, reduced to ash that was coming here. 
Incinerations plants have become more popular in Europe and Asia, especially in areas with limited space. But these plants actually decreased in number in the United States, from 103 in 1999 to just over 70 in 2020. Critics are still concerned about pollutants in the incineration process without proper equipment, and note that it's only a short-term solution. With the landfill projected to be completely filled by 2035, Singapore has only delayed the trash crisis. The country is looking for ways to recycle incinerated bottom ash into other materials, reducing the amount brought to Semacau. We're looking at uh, local universities, look at it. it's a possibility to recycle this ash into new materials, we say for roads work. The government also hopes to increase recycling rates to 70% by 2030, which requires consumer education. Currently, about 40% of items placed in recycling bins cannot actually be recycled due to contamination. As part of this focus, we actually plan to work together in the areas such as the three R's, which is to reduce, reuse, as well as recycle.